So while Sage is brewing her pot full of linguistics nectar, the local school bully and her crony arrive at the scene, also known as Amaryllis and Snapdragon. Not like they have everything hours of their own, both of them are just meandering around. Unless lukewarm insults are their focus for the free period. An infestation of nerds. <laughs> we came up here to get away from the peasants, but here you are. Ugh, is this what you eat? For real, you got to smell this. It's curious, isn't it? The people making this show are certainly the types of people who got their fair share of verbal whippings back in their academic years. I mean, just look at them. And yet, they have no ability to write effective and believable bullying. These lines and delivery are just lame and wimpy, bizarrely safe, and family friendly even. Certainly not the way someone who torments others on a daily basis speaks. This is just sad. But then again, these are the types of people who claim that everyone who dares criticize their creative work is somehow a homophobe, racist, sexist, bigot, literally the worst human alive. So we can count them as officially out of touch with reality. Seeing as her limp verbal jousting gets her nowhere, Amarilis steps up her game and tries to sabotage Sage's potion by throwing in a dragon testicle? I don't know, what is that? There's a bunch of them in all the colors of the rainbow. Taste the rainbow. Double, double, toil and trouble. Chaotic ingredients end up with chaotic effects. And thus, the ruined potion conveniently spills all over the school mascot Nepi and... Can you help me clean this up? You're gonna get in trouble if you go around throwing junk into people's homes. Ooh, are you going to... <laughs> <sighs> I think I just threw up in my mouth. To reverse the spell, Sage just casually draws these magic symbols. How the fuck would she know how to do that? Has she done something like this before? Is there a universal anti-spell incantation that just resets everything? And pray tell, what would be the cost of something like that? But before Sage can finish up her reversal spell, the crime against nature dunks its hand in the potion that enlarged it in the first place, grabs the dragon testicle, which turns into Cardcaptor Sakura's ceiling wand, and the mutant feline jumps off the window, declaring that it has a mission. Now just what the fuck is going on here? The wise and house are rolling in at such a rate it's impossible to keep up. Lucky I have the pause button, so I guess the dragon testicle is a terra sphere, since it transformed into a wand. But why the fuck would a potions lab have a cookie jar full of these things just sitting there? How the hell does an omnicapable magical orb turn a random potion into mutating ooze? And more importantly, why would the school ever give these dumbass children the access to dangerous magical items without supervision? Do they want everyone to die? If these kids made this abomination by accident, then think of what they could do if they actually tried. The school shooting equivalent of this world would be horrific. And as the feline goes for the double dip, how come the potion suddenly does jack shit? Shouldn't it fuck up the poor creature even worse? How does the feline know to go for the terra sphere in the first place? Why would it? What's it gonna do with it? What mission has this mutant cat suddenly been blessed with by the fact that it has been mutated? Instead of screaming in agony or questioning why it's even alive, it storms off on some utter nutshop crusade. What is any of this? Hello, Ebrinian. How are you? Fine, thank you. Oh my god! The mutant cat flees across the schoolyard, spreading confusion and chaos, wet pants all around. The duo of dumb fucks try to zap it with spells. But the writers are incompetent, so the characters are conveniently incapable of aiming for shit. What else is new? 
And before moving any further, I have to point out that none of this will have any kind of consequences. No, I'm dead serious. None of the students are traumatized by this, the faculty will never be notified, the parents will never be notified, nobody cares that a fucking mutant Garfield just rampaged through the school grounds, no one gets into trouble, Sage and Amaryllis never even get a slap on the wrist for transmuting a helpless creature into a hideous monster and unleashing it upon the school, not to mention using a Rufy spell on a fellow student, or throwing around explosive blasts all willy-nilly, nothing about this entire sequence of events matters. This is pure pandemonium, and it's treated like it never happened. Reminder, this is the academy training the good guys. Luckily, the mutant kitty's path happens to cross with Fime's training place, and without asking any questions, the elf puts the cat out of its misery. Time! Is it dead? No, these arrows are tipped with napping potion. Could someone explain to me what's going on? Oh, my mistake. They just seem to burrow mighty deep, kinda like any basic arrow, and they look exactly like normal arrows. And given the way the cat just slammed on his back, those arrows are all the way in his lungs, napping potion or not. Also, napping potion? What are you, five? Call it sleep drug, you twat! Surprise, the mutant is still alive, and the arrows are just gone. Because of course they are. The girls catch up to the cat as it's honing its claws on a suspiciously isolated tree, glowing with eerie light. Ooh. What? Nappy cat. What? <laughs> that is honestly the funniest line in the whole show. I'm serious. It's the delivery. It's at the same time so grouchy and nonchalant. As if the girls hadn't just pelted the cat with magic blasts and arrows, and chased him all across the woods, it still sounds surprised and irritated. It's like, what is it now, you dumb bitch? Can't you see I'm busy? The mutant keeps insisting it has a mission, Fime lets loose another barrage of arrows, and this time the potion does its job. For some reason, the cat reverts back to normal, how convenient, yay, the day is saved, kinda. Truth be told, the cat never harmed anyone, it never even tried to harm anyone. The dumbass mages were the ones who blasted half the schoolyard and their fellow students of the face of the earth. Our heroes, ladies and gentlemen. Also this. Amaryllis, that garbage you pulled made me lose my grip. I meant to cast a gentle, harmless spell. 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 You're a jerk. 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 Snap! W what? Me? I don't... What's wrong? Neppy got your tongue? What can even be said about that? Sage puts on an angry face and vaguely chastises Amaryllis, and Snapdragon suddenly has tummy full of butterflies. Does he have a fetish for pouty-faced chicks? What is so different all of a sudden? I could sort of understand it if Sage just went all out rage mode and blasted Amaryllis verbally off into the stratosphere, then I guess it would be Snapdragon seeing Sage in a different light or something, but this is just lame. One moment there's nothing, and now Snap is all putty. Sorry to tell you all fanfic writers out there, but this is not how human attraction works. There's a bit more that goes into it. And it's all the more sadder considering this is actually the beginning of a... <laughs> ...romantic arc between these two. Just think about it for a second. Snap is enamored with Sage because she called his best friend a jerk for being a bully. A bully he himself supported. I'm just gonna put this right here. And I'm gonna place this question mark right over here. Because I honestly cannot fathom the brain chemistry of the author. This is just embarrassing. I'm actually embarrassed in the writer's behalf. 
I'm sorry you had to witness this. Moving the fuck on. So I did promise you that the grand central narrative of the show would begin by the end of the episode. Well, here it is. The mutant cat uses last of its strength to shove the ceiling wand into the tree, which causes the eerie glow to dissipate. I guess that was its mission? No clue why or how it would know to do any of this. In any case, apparently whatever the cat accomplished wasn't enough, as Fime gazes in horror at the roots of the tree. No. It's the rot. Wait, 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 wait. Explain yourself, Fime. What is the rot? How do you know about it? Is it dangerous? Should we notify the teachers that this magical plague is festering at the academy's backyard? No one asks any of these obvious questions. Nor do the girls ever even consider the possibility of trying the spell anew, getting the cat talking again, and asking it directly what the fuck all of this was about. In fact, no one mentions this to anyone. No, no, the girls just meet up all smiles and sunshine, as if the whole mutant cat episode wouldn't be the talk of the entire school. All the students should be bombarding Sage with questions. What was that thing? Where is it now? What did it want? The whole incident with the rot would come to light within the span of that same afternoon. There is no way that it wouldn't. The rot itself is woefully underdeveloped. Eventually, once the show decides that Oh yeah, we had that whole magical calamity narrative going on. We should probably do something with it. All we get are vague statements about the magic in the world being out of balance. Which means absolutely nothing. What causes the rot? What does it do exactly? How does it spread? Why do the villains wish to cultivate it? This is supposed to be the main threat to this entire world. Every major conflict in the show revolves around it. And yet, it's hand waved away the same as with everything else having to do with world building. For the time being, everyone just goes on with their school life as if nothing happened. All except Fime, who broods in her lonesome about the rot, instead of notifying any of the authorities and enlisting their help. Because at the end of the day, she is the same as everyone else in the show, a self-centered dumbass lacking even the most basic capacity for problem solving or self-preservation. Episode 3 carries an important theme, one that permeates across the entire rest of the series. That theme being the lack of consequences. Absolutely nothing matters. None of these characters behave like people. No one asks the obvious. No one does the obvious. No one is responsible for their actions. Bullshit magic fixes every problem. Once the author decides it's time to wrap everything up, that is. The lack of logical cause and effect is the telltale sign of amateurish writing. And I have yet to witness a show that showcases this at a such consistent rate. And with that, we are fourth of the way done with High Guardian Spice. I'm gonna tear up the fucking dance floor, dude. Check it out. Big thanks to each of you for sticking with me on this brain-mangling, spirit-rending journey. There's only so much pure concentrated stupid one can bear alone. Knowing I can turn this travesty into something that at least resembles entertainment makes it worth the effort. So if you please, keep on watching, keep on liking, keep on commenting, it's all appreciated. And as always, a special thanks goes to my supporters on Patreon. And an extra special thanks to my 10 euro patron Wyland. If you would like to join these fine people, or check out my other creative stuff, all the links are down below. Take care everyone, and I'll see you all in the next one.